Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to draw some hot chocolate mugs in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. One really cool thing about this tutorial is that it's kind of a recap of what we've seen throughout the month of December. So we're going to reuse the patterns that we learned how to draw in the stockings and sweaters tutorial. We're going to draw some cookies just like we did in a gingerbread tutorial. And we're also going to use techniques for coloring and shading that we learned in the how to create and draw cute animal characters. So if you haven't seen these videos, it's totally fine. You can still follow along this one. I'm still going to explain everything, maybe a bit more quickly, but you'll still be able to draw your hot chocolate mug but if you've watched the tutorials you'll have a bunch of tools in your tool belt which is really really awesome but anyway enough rambling go ahead and create a new layer or actually we're gonna start by changing the background color so you can pick a like grayish blue type of color and then create a new layer that you're going to rename to cup or mug and just for like the other videos you can go and download this color palette, which is totally free. It is on Patreon, but it is a public post. Or you can just pick a red color that you want. And I will be using the dry ink brush that comes with Procreate. But if you want a more traditional feel, you can definitely use any of my ultimate brush set, which will always be linked in the description below. And now they're all in this big brush bundle, so you get just all the brushes for a good price. So anyway. Once you've picked the brush you want to use and the fill you want, you're just going to draw this sort of um, like a rounded rectangle. So the two bottom corners, you can see they're rounded and then you have this curve on the top. And then you can just use auto fill if you're using just like solid brushes. If your brush have texture, well, you'll have to color it in, but that shouldn't take too long at all. And once you have your main mug shape, you're just going to draw the handle. And for the handle, you can go with some sort of a C shape like this or more of a like rectangular handle. That's really up to, up to you and what you feel. And you're also going to make sure that it is thick enough because we don't want a like, slim handle that's gonna break the second you try to take your mug, which you just feel with really nice hot chocolate. That would really suck. So go ahead and draw a nice thick handle. Once you have a mug shape that you like, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to apply as a clipping mask and you're going to rename this layer to design. And if you've watched the sweater tutorial or the Christmas stocking tutorial, you know what we're about to do. Go ahead and pick the nice cream color that we have here. And you can make it a bit more uh, golden if you want, but I, I like to have it just like a normal cream. And with your same brush that you picked, you're just going to draw some sort of a design. And I'm going to show you a few things that look good. But the, the first thing I like to do is just draw this top line that kind of shows the opening of the, the mug. And then add a few more lines to help me kind of divide the mug into a few sections, because otherwise it just gets overwhelming to me at least. And one of the first designs we're going to do is the reindeer. So. I showed this one a bunch of times, but basically all you're doing is you're starting with the reindeer body, which is just this very simple rectangle. Then on one side, you're adding a vertical line, which is going to be the neck. On top of that, one little rectangle, which is going to be the head. Then a V for the ears, a bigger V for the antlers, a little tiny stubby line for the, the tail, and then four little lines for the legs. So super easy. Um, but it looks really good every single time. <laughs> Another cool design that we've used a lot in the um, December tutorial has been this like star. So again, the way to draw it in a very simple fashion <laughs> is to draw this sort of a plus sign that is made out of pairs of lines, if that makes any sense at all. I felt like I've explained it better in the past, but um. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's the explanation we get in this tutorial. Um, and yeah, then transform the little lines into triangles. So the video makes it pretty easy to understand. Um, and maybe my word explanations make more sense in the other videos. So who knows? <laughs> and then you complete the design with a little dot in the circle and a few diagonal lines on the side. So these are just two example of uh, patterns and designs that you can use, but you can really draw a bunch of different things and you can also just mix and match 
I don't know why that's always really hard to say for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can mix and match the patterns. And basically all you're doing is you're doodling to fill out the spaces in a way that's going to look cool and um, interesting in the end. So you can see I'm going with very simple dots for the bottom part. And then the top, let's see what I've decided to do at the top. I think I'm just going to go with very simple little plus signs. Yep. So super easy shapes, but when you combine them all together, it looks, it looks good. And I mean, who are we kidding here anyway? The focus of this piece is not the mug itself, it's all the goodness that we're gonna put on top of the hot chocolate. So go ahead and once you have your mug that you like and the design that you like, create a new layer on top of everything that you're going to rename to hot chocolate. You're also going to pick the brown that you want your hot chocolate to be. So that's up to you, depending on how dark you want your hot chocolate or how um, creamy you want it to look. So uh that's yeah just just a brown <laughs> and the way to draw it is you just draw this sort of um oval shape that touches the line um that we've created in the front so the white line but doesn't quite go all the way up to the back so basically you want to see a little bit of the mug that pokes out um from behind the hot chocolate and just to keep things well organized, we're going to group all the layers that we have already. And to do that, just open your layer panel, swipe all your three layers towards the right, and then click group. You're then going to create a new layer within that group, and you're going to rename it to cream. I'm going to show you how to draw the whipped cream and also how to draw marshmallows, um, but we're going to start with the whipped cream. And you can just go back to the same like creamy color that we use for the design. And drawing the whipped cream is really super easy. You're just going to start with some sort of a semicircle on top of um, your hot chocolate. So the semicircle should touch the white line in the design and just extend. And then on top of that, you draw two more semicircles and this little whippy kind of thing on top. And if you feel like your whipped cream doesn't look exactly like you want you can always use the error tool set to distort and just move it around a little bit so that it sits better on your hot chocolate and also you can just erase little parts that kind of extend too far with the eraser of course we're going to add a little bit of definition to this cream so go ahead and open the layer option and select alpha lock and then select a darker version of your cream color um yeah and with your same brush you're just going to draw a slightly curved line that starts from the middle of the um, cream mountain <laughs> and then extends towards the edges and you can then blend them in a little bit so if you have a tilted pencil or a pencil that has tilted capacity um, you can use that to kind of feather in a little bit your um, your strokes and then you're going to pick pretty much just like a straight up white and you're going to do kind of um, C curves on the opposite side. So you outline the edge, so the left edge, and then you extend your line so that it meets with the darker edge. And I'm sorry, I realize on camera we cannot barely see the difference between these colors, but if you look at the example in the thumbnail, you'll see it and I really apologize but anyway um, once you have your whipped cream go ahead and create a new layer name it to sprinkles and then you can pick the color you want for your sprinkles I'm just going to go with chocolate sprinkles and you can really draw any shape that you want here I'm drawing the regular uh, like little lines for the sprinkles but you could go with stars you could go with chocolate chips you could go with hearts you could go I don't know any type of, of sprinkle it's just going to look good because you know what? Her sprinkles. You could also go with uh, rainbow sprinkles. I'm trying to keep it fairly uniform here, but seriously, go crazy if you want. It's hot chocolate. But I know whipped cream is not for everyone. I know some people are just marshmallow fanatics. So if that's, that's what you are, go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to marshmallows. And with your same cream color that we've been using since the start, just going to draw little blobs that are floating on top of your hot chocolate 
and it's really nice to vary the size and the shape of these blobs otherwise it's going to look a bit weird because you know your marshmallows unless you just put them in like a few seconds after you look at your cup they're gonna melt and and you want to feel that your marshmallows are melting in the goodness of the hot chocolate so you want to draw them like they're in the process of being just combining with um, the warm liquid can you tell i really love hot chocolate <laughs> i feel so passionate in this tutorial um, if you are drawing marshmallows i only recommend that you pick um, your hot chocolate color go back to your hot chocolate layer and just add a little bit of um like a shadow behind or around your marshmallows just so that it pops a little bit more you didn't have to do that with the whipped cream because the whipped cream took almost the entirety of the top of the cup but with the marshmallows otherwise it looks a bit plain and boring so that's a very easy step to fix that okay so this is starting to look pretty good but uh, maybe it misses a little bit more of a like a crunchy element to it. So let's go ahead and create a new layer um, just on top of the hot chocolate layer. And you're going to rename this one to gingerbread. And if you've watched a gingerbread tutorial, you, you know what to do already. But otherwise, I'm going to show you. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and pick a nice light brown color. So a golden type of color. And you can draw any shape you want. You could draw like a star, you could draw a um, Christmas tree, or just a traditional gingerbread man type of, of uh, shape. And that's what I'm doing. So just start with a circle, if that's what you want to do as well, for the head. And then a regular rectangle. A regular rectangle. What's an irregular rectangle? But just a rectangle for the body. And then two little stubbly arms on the side. And since it's a cookie, don't worry about it. You know, it's it's been baked, it grew in the oven, it had a bunch of weird shapes, and a lot of things happened to it, so don't don't worry. <laughs> and um, just like we did in the actual gingerbread tutorial, go ahead and pick a darker version of your brown, and you're just going to outline the edges on the right um, to kind of show the thickness of the cookie, so it's not just like a flat cookie, because that's really sad. I don't know what I have today. I'm just on fire with these weird comments. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're then going to pick the color you want your icing to be. I think a nice cream color works really well just because it ties in with what we've um, been drawing so far. And you're just going to outline your entire cookie. So super simple, just outline everything. And then depending on if you're drawing like a gingerbread person or like an object, you're either going to draw some features just like this or some patterns kind of like we did on the mug um, to fill in or just make your gingerbread a little bit more interesting. And also because if it was a real gingerbread, you want to want it to be fully dry. You know, you want a little bit of icing on that. <laughs> and again, just like we did in the real gingerbread tutorial, like the flow-on tutorial, we're going to add a little bit of um, a spice to this gingerbread, or uh, I mean more contrast. I need to calm down. And to do that, go ahead and select a darker version of your brown. And you're just going to kind of um, draw a little line on the right side of your icing. So every time you have an icing element, check out the far right and then add a little line. And that's going to kind of give the idea of the icing being raised a little bit. So it's like the icing is casting a shadow on the cookie. But it's also just going to make it look a bit more contrasted. So when you zoom out, you're not going to lose all the details of your, um, of your illustration. And once you have all your little outlines, you're just going to add a little bit of texture. So simple little dots uh, speckled around on your cookie. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not following like a strict pattern that looks too regular. You actually want to have just little spots and sections that have little dots to make it look more like a cookie and not just like a flat thing. And I know I said not to worry too much about the shape of your cookie because it's a cookie and it went through a lot. But if you don't like it, as I apparently am not liking mine, you can always just use the eraser and tweak it a little bit. 
Cool. So let's give this gingerbread man two little wafer, wafer. Oh no, I never remember how to pronounce that. Um, feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, go ahead and create a new layer <laughs> on top of your gingerbread layer. And you're going to rename it this one to wafer, wafer, or just cookie if, if that's easier. <laughs> and if your handwriting is like mine too bad for the scribble function on the ipad and for some reason it reads water instead of wafer wafers feel free to write in all caps because then as you can see here it's going to work out once you do have your layer properly named go ahead and pick a golden brown kind of like the gingerbread man and you're just going to draw some rounded thin rectangles for some sort of um you know the rounded little cookies in French, we call them pirouline. I have no idea what they're called in English, but they're really, really tasty. And sometimes they have like hazelnut cream in the middle. They're so good. And they also look really good because they have all these nice little swirls on it. So yeah. And just like we did for the cream, go ahead and set your layer to alpha lock, which is going to allow us to draw on top of it without the color going everywhere. And you're just going to pick a darker version of your golden brown and drawing this swirls um, on the length of your cookies as well as a spiral at the top. You can then add even more texture by picking a darker version of that color and maybe a smaller brush and just adding some little lines um, in groups of three. It's going to just make everything pop a little bit more. So once you have your mug fully decorated and filled with goodness, go ahead and just collapse the group uh, with all your layers. And you're then going to rename this group to um, hot chocolate or mug or just something that you will remember. Because the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate this group. And to do that, swipe it towards the left, click on duplicate. Then you can hide the first version and then tap on it, which is going to allow you to flatten the layer. You're then going to create a new layer on top of this and you're going to apply it as a clipping mask and you're going to rename it to shadows. You're then going to change the blending mode to linear burn and lower the opacity quite a lot, so somewhere around like 30 to 40%. And you're going to pick a gray that has a slight purple tint to it. And just like the name of the layer says, we're going to draw some shadows. So the few really important shadows that uh, there are to draw here are the ones that kind of show that the handle is kind of separated from the rest of the mug. And also just a shadow around the bottom part of the mug, just to make it detach a little bit better from the, um, the background. And you can also draw some shadows on the cookies um, to make them pop a little bit more, as well as on the bottom part or the, um, the back part, I should say, of the mug behind the chocolate. So now that we have our shadows, we're also going to add a little bit of light. So go ahead and create a new layer, apply it as a clipping mask and rename it to light. This one we're going to apply it as, um, or change the blending mode and set it to add, I should say, and lower the opacity a lot. And you're going to pick kind of a really bright, super light pink. And you're just going to outline the um, left edges of your cup. So the handle, the cup itself. You can also outline the left edges of your cookies. And you're then going to fill in a little bit more of that left corner, so top left corner of the mug. And if you've watched part two of the how to draw cute animal characters, you probably remember that I like to blend either the lights or the shadows. So in this case, we're going to blend the, the lights. So using the smudge tool, you just go ahead and make sure that you don't have too many super hard edges on your light. But you do want to keep the hard edges on the shadow. It's just going to make the piece a bit more interesting and it's going to give it more contrast, which is always really cool, especially when we have a very simple style like this one. Once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to rename to color effect. <laughs> and this layer you're going to 
set it as a clipping mask as well. And you're going to change the blending mode of it to soft light. You're also going to pick a color that is a bit weird. So <laughs> in this case, we're going with a fairly bright and saturated purple and you're just going to brush it over the right part of your mug and um, you can see here I'm adjusting the color so that it shows a little bit better but all you want to do at this step is add some texture so draw and use the smudge tool until you get something that looks looks cool and yeah so it's just about texture and color variation it's not really about anything else than that <laughs> you're also going to pick a bright super light yellow orangey type of color and brush it over the left side of your mug and smudge it as well so again nothing precise here we're just adding a little bit of color variation and making the piece feel more dynamic as you can see here if we hide this layer it just it just makes it more interesting and you can always play with the opacity so that it blends better but yeah, it's just a really quick extra step to give more life to your piece. And the last thing we're going to do is you're going to create a new layer, put it below everything, and we're going to rename it shadow. And this is what um, where we're going to draw the cast shadow. So set the layer mode to multiply and then pick the color that you use for your background and just draw some sort of a like oval shape um, around the bottom part of your mug that is kind of the, the cast shadow and you can play with the opacity as well so nothing too crazy nothing too difficult here but it does make the piece feel more complete because it kind of sits the mug into space instead of just having it float around so there you go this was how to draw a hot chocolate mug in procreate and i bet you could use this tutorial in other software so anyway i would love to see what you guys created so make sure to share the results with me either on facebook instagram or twitter and if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really really does help the channel and last but not least don't forget to subscribe because i put out new videos every week